can't believe I'm looking at this icon on my Nintendo Switch. And to think, only a couple hours after the Direct. But here it is, everybody. Metroid Prime Remaster. Um, this was 40 bucks. Nintendo and Retro Studios present... Well, who developed this? Was it Retro that remastered it? Hmm. I don't know if we have that information. Oh, man. It's the fucking intro. Did they- I guess they had to up-res this beginning part, too. Wait, why was the extras? Glowing concept soundtrack gallery. Yeah, we're gonna turn this up. Oh, they have, like, remastered art, too, I think. Maybe. Did you play the PC fan port with mouse controls? I think I might have tried it. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm really, really excited for this chat. I specifically waited so as not to play this game. Like, I didn't want to play it, and then, a, a, like, a remaster. And this is even better, because I was just expecting the trilogy with better controls. And now we get new visuals. So... Someone said, me too, but goddamn, I need to finish Fire Emblem. I need to finish, like, five games. Fire Emblem included. But we are eating good. As for the thing with Jerma later, I know he's got a lot of other people that want to join in. So I'm going to try to join in without being annoying, because he and I talked about it. And uh, we'll figure out. I'll be playing Dark and Darker regardless, whether it be with Germ, with um, some other random creator friends, or some of my mods. We're going to be playing it. Resolution. I can't wait for the side-by-side -side videos showing the original graphics and the new ones. I can see the, the lighting. Like, there's like subtle shading and lighting that I really like. It's nothing too drastic, but aside from the better textures and models... It looks good. There's some anti-aliasing. Well, actually, that there's a little scumminess over there, but that's okay. It's the switch. You sure there's anti-aliasing there? Nope. Not sure at all. Sam. Amazing. I like the inside of the blaster. It looks awesome. Okay, now I'm wondering with the dual stick controls, you shoot with, with R. Which means, as a result of that, tapping... I mean, you can also shoot with the, um... You can also shoot with A for, like, fast tapping, but R has, like, a good way of doing it, too, because you can tap kind of quickly. Lock-on is still L, L2, or ZL, in this case. Oh, yeah. No, there's definitely some, some improvements here. Um, not so sure about the anti-aliasing, but it looks smooth enough. Yeah. 
They redid the graphics on, like, the, the scan points, too. I can't believe they shadow dropped this. I just, I can't believe it. But, I mean, it eases the pain of not having heard of Prime 4. Well, you know what I mean, not having heard of. Uh, <laughs> essentially, we got a title and then a video saying, we're very sorry, it doesn't exist right now. Vinny, are you doing a full playthrough? I, I guess I have to. Not that I'm upset about that. Deck Gamma, Reactor Core and Propulsion, Current Status, Environment, Normal. Deck Beta. Deck Alpha. Just taking in all the little details. You can jump with L. If you don't want to use the actual jump button. Like, so say if you're doing some, like, you know, insane platforming and, and shooting and, and, and stuff, you can just press L to jump. Yeah, this is quite a bit more than just, like, a slight fresh coat of paint. I guess Retro did this, chat. Unless... I can find otherwise, or someone else can. I, I don't have that information, but I think... It, it appears that Retro might have done this. Doubt? It said Retro when you started. Yeah, but I mean, it would have to anyway, right? Morphology unknown info. High levels of radiation detected. The platform does not look like it can be activated from this room. See the effect. Yeah, I mean, things just look higher quality, smoother. It, it appears to be a, like a really... like a really uh, detail-oriented remaster. And I hate to shit on the Switch, but I will anyway. It's not a very powerful console, but it still looks really good on it. Even though Metroid Prime, I thought, aged really well, visually. Tail section possesses a mouth-like orifice. Most likely used for birthing offspring. I mean, also, please be good. Like, I hope the whole thing stays good. Ah, I didn't get the scan. Helen for Research Command Center. Are there HUD options, was a chat member's question. Oh, this is easier to rotate around with the dual analogs. So you have, uh, control options, you got control scheme, pointer, similar to Metroid Prime Trilogy for Wii, Hybrid combines classic control scheme with motion controls for aiming. Classic or dual stick. I like the dual stick so far. Um, swap beam and visor. X plus... Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Swap beam and missile. Camera. Gyro plus... Oh, gyro controls too? I'll check it out for a minute. Free, uh, lock on free aim. Spring ball sensitivity. Uh, lots of options. Opacity of HUD elements. 
can be adjusted. Helmet visibility, HUD lag, hint system. I mean, I've already played this game a bunch. I'll leave the hints on just in case I don't remember and then ask chat. Um, extras alerts. Okay. Oh boy, gyro. I kind of don't think gyro... I mean, you can adjust the sensitivity, I kind of don't think I need it. I feel like the dual plus lock-on is going to be good enough. I can't believe they shadow dropped this. In February. What? Oh, you can just straight up turn the HUD off completely. <laughs> Let's see if you can still see Samus's face. Uh-oh, that's a bad texture. Yep. Yeah, you can see her eyes a little bit. Um... Well, we, we need some HUD, otherwise I'm not gonna know how much health and missiles I have, so... Options. Don't mind me. This is all very interesting stuff to me, but probably not for everybody. Space pirate. Death caused by excessive blunt trauma to the cranium. And fucking cranium hits. Access to deck beta approved. I always thought the interiors of this game looked really good and, and still continue to look good. It's some of the exteriors that didn't do all that well. Like some of the outside, like, greener areas. Specimen containment breach on deck beta all crew report for lockdown. I wonder what the physical version is going to look like, too. It's just going to be the same cover, but on a switch case. Um, considering as a collector, like, of Metroid things, getting it, but I don't know yet. I still don't even have the Metroid Prime Trilogy. There's a new artwork. Phazon compound detected. Um, hibernation of, of, of specimen. Space pirate. Severe internal damage detected. Both legs of this creature are broken. Space pirates look good. I wonder if they're gonna do this for Prime 2 and 3. I mean, they should. 2 is actually... Like, maybe better in some ways, too. I love Metroid Prime 2. The fluid sacs in the mouth enlarge after mutation. Parasite egg in pupa stage. After mutation, the carapace of the larva becomes rigid. Combat mutation applications are complete. This is also a good way to reintroduce people to the Metroid Prime series, because if they've only played Dread, or haven't played any Troids... It's like, well, here's the first one, and it's very, very palatable to play. 
and looks good. I mean, it's just, there were rumors of this existing for what? Five years or more? <laughs> A new pirate data entry has been downloaded to your logbook. Seabees has fallen. All ground personnel are presumed dead. Either killed by the hunter clad in metal, or the subsequent destruction of the underground facilities. Our research frigates Orpheon, Serpico, and Vol Paragom were in orbit at zero hour and managed to retreat. Frigate Orpheon is now docked at Vortex Outpost. Orpheon's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. Metroids are healthy, but on restricted feeding schedules due to uncertain supply status. We are, already, we are ready to begin research on the Metroids and other promising life forms. Security status remains at code blue. No signs of pursuit from the hunter. So, Phazon has been introduced here. There's a lot of lore if you want it. This specimen has been horribly mutated. There are no life readings. Like, that's the thing about Metroid Prime. You can just skip all this. You only need to, like, use the visor to um, open some doors and a couple other things. But for the most part, if you don't want to read about this shit, you don't have to. Specimen solitary holding one. Unknown status, xenotrophic... Xenotropic life form unstable. Use caution. Auto turret. Use missiles to break outer casing. Vinny, did you find out who remade the game? <laughs> nope. Are you ready for four, five more years of Metroid Prime 2 remastered rumors? Yep, I am. I mean, did they redo all of this stuff from scratch? Whoever made this? Like, all these little things, they had to increase the resolution. I wonder if they used any, like, AI upscaling, or they just did it by hand. Because this stuff has a way better resolution than it used to. And there's so many fucking assets like that in this game. I like how now you can kind of just play this without having to lock on at all if you don't want to. But essentially they're introducing what you get from this story-wise real early on is they're introducing this substance called Phazon into um, tanks of weird creatures and mutating them on purpose. If that wasn't, you know, clear from some of the stuff we've seen. Shriek Bat, native of Talon 4. Plated Parasite Larva. So they're just taking creatures from the planet and... ...fucking around and finding out, basically. It's hard to believe that this came out, what, like, 21 years ago, almost? Crazy. Exactly 20. 
Vinny know it came out 20 minutes ago? Oh, yeah. Door lock enabled. Please insert metallic sphere to open door. Hmm. Does anyone have a Benoit ball? Space pirate, dead. This creature looks like it struggled to get through this door. They really want me to insert them metallic spheres. Missile ammunition. I feel like if this was a different time for Nintendo, this would have been the focus of, of the Direct, or this would have been like the final announcement. Crazy it was just some like, you know, random announcement with a insta drop in the middle of a Direct, starting with Pikmin and Zelda. Are the new controls better? Yes. Ooh, the shield looks awesome. It's better for exploration, but for a lot of other stuff, the game was meant to be played with the lock on. So you can just as easily switch over to the A button if you really want to, like, mash it. Parasite Queen. Parasite female genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in the creature's mouth. Use your auto-targeting to acquire this new target. Scans indicate the presence of a potent mutagen, origins unknown. Creature exhibits the ability to fire weapons-grade blasts of energy from its mouth, a trait not present in the standard parasite genome. It appears the pirates have begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. textures. I love the emergency holograms that just appear. <laughs> it's like just error message pop-ups. You know there's definitely adware on the ship. Like, people be walking around, there's like gonna be some fucking pop-ups for, uh... You know, some kind of, like, ape that you can buy, or... Parasite enlargement pills that you get from a sewer clown. Creature is deceased. Um, its incubation period was prematurely terminated. Terminated. Its shell has not fully hardened.
being able to like look around and move and shoot is really kind of a game changer. on rolling. I wonder if I, I can scan those little fellas. Oh yeah, I can. Forgot about that. I have to scan them before they all, like, gore themselves. Parasite, interstellar vermin, they travel in swarms. Indigenous to Talon 4, a single parasite is harmless to larger life forms. However, they tend to travel in large groups, swarming over potential prey. Such swarms can be dangerous. But yeah, you want to get as many scans as you can if you want to unlock stuff. Ah, fellas, get out of here! We got a raid? Whoa. Uh, who, uh, who raided? Who raided? Anyone? Was that real, even? Nope. I don't think it was real. Okay, no. <laughs> One person said it, and I was like, oh. Meta Ridley. Weapon update complete. Stinger Ballistics online. Plasma Fuel Cell online. Cerebral casing stable. Exoskeleton seal holding. Begin umbilical retraction. They really thought of a lot of cool names for things in this game. A, calling it Metroid Prime to start. And then B, Meta Ridley. What other cool words are there, chat? <laughs> Tubular crate. Well, look, they actually explain how Samus loses the stuff in this one. They didn't have to. But yeah, you lose pretty much everything. You can just basically walk, jump, and shoot. pirates blown out into space. Load times are way better too, yeah? Blast times are real good.
Tracking on enemy target has been lost. Ground-based recon required. Begin landing sequence. Okay, so this is where the game needed the most improvement. Just visually. It already looks good. Retro Studios did develop this, an employee posted about it on Twitter. Wow, the first retro game in 10 years. And it's Metroid Prime again. So this is why we didn't get Prime 4. Or maybe this was like an engine test or something. Or like, let's do this first so we know what we're doing. Or maybe they had a different team on it. Looks pretty damn good. Again, you're gonna hear me say this a lot. For the Switch. But yeah, this area needed the most amount of attention, and I think it, it looks way more natural now. This blew my mind. When I saw this in 2002, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how did they make Metroid work in 3D? Does it make any sense? Alright, someone's got to port this into VR chat now. Yeah, I mean, Retro still got a, a way of making... Um, nice looking video games. Like, it seems like they still... They still got it. And it looks like sound effects and music are just the same as the old one, which... Fair enough. The music was already perfect. Sound effects were good. Seedling um, plant-based ground feeder dorsal spines can be ejected in self-defense. This, wait, wait, wait. We also know from a LinkedIn profile of a Retro Studios employee that this remaster was finished in 2021. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sure I would need to um, do a little bit more research than say none to believe that, but at the same time, yeah. Fair enough, if that's true. I don't know why Nintendo would hold on to it for so long, but alright. Field team reports are in on an aged structure of alien design built on the surface of Talon 4. Studies show this structure pro uh, projects a containment field. This field bars access to a prime source of energy. Prime source of energy within a deep crater. Science team believes the field is powered by a number of strange Chozo artifacts. We have found some of these relics, and studies on them have begun. As this field could hinder future energy production operations on Talon 4, we must dismantle it as soon as possible. If this means the dest destruction of the Chozo artifact, it will be done. A little stumble over there. Oh, I always, lo I always love this.
enable narration mode. Huh. I hear no such narration. There is a blast shield on the door blocking access. Cinematics only. Alright. I guess we'll find out when it happens. I mean, it does still beg the question, what is the deal with Metroid Prime 4? Also, yeah, the widescreen is nice. A new creature's entry has been downloaded to your logbook. Blast cap. Volatile chemicals within this weed's toxic fungal cap may explode if agitated. The poisonous flesh of the blast cap helps to keep it from being eaten. It also detonates its fungal cap when it senses even slight contact. I kind of felt like that was going to be their big holiday game this year, but I, I kind of doubt it now. Me <laughs> maybe at E3 we'll find out about it, chat. Oh, wait. I hear E3 this year is being held in someone's garage. Just someone in Parsippany, New Jersey. They're just gonna host it there and, um... You know, they'll show off a couple games, maybe. They're thinking about it, they're thinking about it. McDonald's dumpster. <laughs> yeah. I do think that the fact that this came out... To me, this almost indicates that if we get a Summer Direct, we'll probably hear a little bit of Prime 4. You know what? I, let me let me just stop that. Here's what I would do. If I was Nine Tender, here's what I would do. Wait for Zelda to release, and have its social media presence well and truly exhausted first. That looks cool. The subtle, like, fog effect is nice, too. Mist. Zoomer. See, chat? Here's some of you. Anchors itself to walls and other surfaces. Avoids contact with sp Avoid contact with spikes. A basic nerve center located directly above the zoomer's mandibles detect nut nutrients. Sharp spines protect it from casual predators. But, the lack of a reinforced carapace makes the Zoomer vulnerable to any indirect attacks. True TBH! So anyway... Um... If I were Nintendo, I would... Wait until, like, June... Or July... And then do, a, like, a direct featuring Prime 4. And then saying, hey, this game is going to release in uh, November. So after the big hype of Zelda, you they can then build hype for Prime 4. Which is, again, not traditionally the most um, popular game in Nintendo's arsenal. But it's still up their arsenal. Gamer. Wall-crawling mollusk with retractable spikes. The Gamer is an evolutionary offshoot of the Zoomer family. When threatened, it extends lethal spikes and retracts its head deep into its armored carapace.
Wait until you see the Coomer later on, chat. Blood flower. Able to eject toxic spores. Toxins are poisonous even to the blood flower itself. Sap sac. Chemical reaction within sac produces a violent explosion when agitated. Because of its irresistible odor and sweet nectar, the sap sac was nearly eaten out of existence. The evolution of an explosive chemical sac saved it. Now only brave or ingenious creatures dare to devour it. Oh, I like that. Yeah, they, they put a lot of effort into this remaster. How's the game? They put a lot of effort into the remaster. It's still Metroid Prime. But... A lot of redone assets, and it doesn't feel lazy. Still plays good. Plays better, actually, because of the dual, um, dual stick controls. Beetle. <laughs> what a name that is, huh? Original! Burrowing insect with a resilient carapace, extremely aggressive. This insect's massive mouth enables it to tunnel through solid rock at high speeds. Above ground, beetles can cover short distances rapidly. They attack anything that moves near their lair. Was that like a form of HDR? Maybe faked HDR? Because the lighting kind of adjusts when you walk into darker places? No, 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 not actual HDR, like just... The brightness kind of switches based on, on the brightness. HDR bloom? Maybe. Chozo ruins west, granted. That's called exposure effect. Oh, okay. Sorry for my ignorance. Alright. Hang on a second here, chat. Just checking. Okay. So yeah, dark and darker I'm gonna switch to around 9 p.m. Eastern. New environment. Uh-oh. Game unplayable. Texture too low. Bad rock. How much was this game? 40. Which, to me, feels like a fair price for one of the best games ever brought over with, um, all these improvements. But I'm a little biased because it is in, like, my top 20 of all time, so, you know. New Chozo lore. The history of the Chozo stretches back into ancient times, so far into the fog of the past that we know not where our ancestors came from. One thing is clear, however, the Chozo who colonized Talon IV made a conscious choice to eschew a civilization of advanced technology. We Chozo chose to live in harmony with nature, guided by the providence of the universe. We believe we will spend peaceful days here and plan to leave our world words from time to time. My sweet summer children. sci-fi noises. I often cite Metroid as my favorite game series of all time. 
and in reality, it's probably a toss-up between this and Zelda. If Chrono had more than two games, and I do love both, if Chrono had like a couple more games and they were also really high quality, that would be my favorite, but it's just two games, so... I count, I count them kind of a little bit separate anyway, because they're, you know, pretty different. But, um, I would say Metroid has consistently been one of my most replayed series that has the highest quality entries. And I just love the sci-fi shit so much. Zelda is real close, though. Other M. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the clear clunker of the... of the group. But, I mean, even Zelda had... Gee, I just wonder what Ganon's up to! But that wasn't developed by Nintendo. Not directly. Other M was like a first-party major release. Oof. It looking around, admiring the scenery. Sorry, I don't think I'm gonna be breaking the speedrun world record for this game. New creatures, scarab. Exploding parasites that can embed their bodies in solid rock. Scarabs think nothing of sacrificing themselves for the safety of their swarm. When a hostile life form is sighted, they block its progress by embedding themselves into floors and walls. Embedded scarabs violently self-destruct when threatened. Like the... Like the subtle lighting on the walls. Ion. Immobile organisms entirely composed of ocular tissue, capable of launching sustained energy beams when active. The ion is sensitive to light and will close shut if a bright flash ignites nearby. Oh, that's a... An eyeball. Again, very playable without lock-on, and there is some, like, aim assist with the shots to help the shots get to where they need to be, but that was, I think, in the original anyway. You may be able to turn that off. Lock-on free aim. Use motion controls to fine-tune the lock, uh, targeting reticle when locked on. Stick. Huh. It's more of a thing from Prime 3, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, gyro aim is, is in the game. I turned it off because I didn't... It was getting a little wacky. Many long years have passed since Wichozo first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other, unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with visions. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps, finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known to us. Oh. 
Oh yeah, you can adjust. That's... I don't like that very much at all. But... You can do it. It's not even necessary for this game. It would be necessary, I think, for Prime 3, but not this one. War Wasp. Airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. The War Wasp rarely strays from its... far from its hive unless it's pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival. And, and other things, too. Save point. Samus is like, wait, what do you mean, save the game? The gyro is probably so you can recreate the Prime Trilogy with the uh, Wiimote. Yes. Well, you can also use the Joy-Con for that level of motion control as well. Three camera time. This room looks nice. I mean, I'm gonna be saying that a lot, but... Like, I remember a lot of these rooms. I've played through this game probably about three or four times. Not as many as Super Metroid. But it's also, like, a good deal longer than Super Metroid. Chozo sculpted, um... Sculpture crafted in honor of Talon Star. I like that they designed it so that, like, a lot of the rooms have, like, an actual lore purpose. I forgot how long you go without getting your missiles back. Um, plasmite. Small insect capable of storing and releasing thermal energy. Plasmites are attracted to sources of heat, thriving on the energy present there. They emit a light when hunting and will expel small bursts of thermal energy when threatened. Uh, enunciate. The syllables. Place has seen its better days, fellas. Foiled again.
different type of war wasp. Ram war wasp. Airborne predator circles its prey and then strikes. They're the only species on Talon 4 to evolve a true hive mind. Nesting in damp, dark places, ram war wasps emerge in small groups when threatened and circle their enemy at high speeds, disorienting it, striking from all sides as a single intelligence that can fell huge organisms. This device is emitting a high-frequency signal. This may be the cause of the war wasp swarms. Hive Mecha. Security unit programmed to work with predatory hive dweller dwellers, even. A design flaw makes the shielding of, uh, on Hive Mecha weak around their access ports. These units are second-generation combat drones able to interface with organic units at a... <clears throat> Good enough. I'm already having trouble reading things today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let's just go ahead and play play the game a little bit more. This is a really just a good way to teach you lock on, like how to. Uh, lock on to foes and combat them quickly and efficiently. Again, you can use ZR to shoot when you're doing the dual analog stick controls, twin stick. Which I've been using. And you can also, um... Kind of hold the button. So it's kind of almost set up like a shmup. In the sense that you can rapid fire without having to, like, jam on it. However, you can shoot faster if you do jam on the button. And for that, I would almost recommend switching over the A button. It's just a little faster that way. It depends on how you finger blast. That's really what I'm trying to say. Because, I mean, maybe... You know... There's different ways to do it. Is that a missile launcher? Press R to fire, and, you know, the stuff that you learned how to do earlier. You can even scan the grass. Tangleweed. Plant life with basic sentience. Retracts into ground if threatened. Tangleweeds are only dangerous to small organisms. They're covered in tiny barbs designed to trap potential meals. Tangleweeds lack the strength to do anything more than hinder larger life forms. You forgot to scan the missile power-up. I will forget to scan other power-ups, for sure. I'm not going for 100%, but I'll try to remember that for next time. That sucked. Vinny, there are several gyro control settings that are compatible with dual stick aiming. Uh, yeah, I tried one of them. I didn't really like it. I think I would have had to adjusted the, um, sensitivity a bit. I feel like... 
for this game, you don't really need it. It seems to work just fine like this. But I like that there's options. Still so satisfying. But yeah, I can't wait for the um, inevitable comparison videos. Because I wonder if there's any things that are new, or like any rooms that were modified in regards to maybe like some obtuse puzzles or difficulty or just to make it look better or flow better. I wonder if they went and like redid whole chunks of rooms. But yeah, Digital Foundry is going to be very interesting. Like the Dead Space remake. Well, I haven't played that yet, but that'll be in October for Spooptober. Because, I mean, I kind of only just recently played Dead Space a couple years ago, so... There's been a longer amount of time since I played Metroid Prime to, to now, as opposed to me playing Dead Space for the first time. And then playing the remake for it. But I'm excited for it. I'm more excited for Resident Evil 4. I mean, everything old is just what we're playing again these days. What about Silent Hill 4? What, the room? I'm thinking about it. I mean, it's still many months away, but I know we had this conversation last October about me hearing the game wasn't that good versus some people saying it's actually mostly really good. So, um, you know, I can play multiple games. When does the Silent Hill 2 remake come out? Speaking of remakes. Just think of it this way, chat. You don't have to ever play a new game ever again. All you have to do is just wait for a remake of favorite game to come out. It's just soon TM. Oh. Rubber band, rubber band man. Did we actually get a raid? Oh, we got the Limes raid back! Wait, that was like instant pay it forward. I hope everyone enjoyed Limes, and uh, thank you, Lime, for being back here and uh, directing the people, and your people, and all the people, in their park life, as they all go hand in hand, hand in hand in their park life. Yeah, I've been live. I basically, here's what I did. I just made some soup, like, super quick. And had the rest of a chicken cutlet. And then, um, I just downloaded the game while that was happening. Because I, this is like one of my top games of all time. And if you're just joining, this remake is actually way more detailed than we all expected. Like, aside from controlling better... It looks really, really good for the Switch. And I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. Like, this is not a lazy remake by any means. It's not as extensive as something as, like... Dead Space Remake. Or what Resident Evil 4 is gonna be in March. But it kind of doesn't have to be. Metroid Prime is already great. And it just cleans it up. Gives it the widescreen support it needs. 
um, gives you some better control options and just adds a whole lot of new assets and redoes all the rest. It's it's really well done so far. Does the game look 1080p? I don't think so. It might be like a nine. It does. Um, maybe because some of it's a little fuzzy and there's no anti-aliasing, even though I think that kind of is because it's a, it doesn't have the sharper edges of, of something like Fire Emblem Three Houses. So maybe like 960p or 900. Um, it could fluctuate, but it's been smooth 60 the whole time, FPS. I mean, I kind of... It, it might be? I don't think it's 1080. It might be, but I'm not sure. We're gonna have to wait for Digital Foundry, everybody. Nintendo's been looking into FSR lately. It could be that. Let's see. Plated beetle, well-armored, borrowing insect, vulnerable only in the rear abdomen. Creature's thick cranial plating can repel frontal attacks. This gives it an advantage in combat, allowing it to make ramming attacks. Only surfacing when it detects vibrations above, it then maneuvers itself so as to keep- always face its rival, keeping its exposed abdomen protected. Do you see the light, uh, reflect on Samus's face? It's still one of my favorite. Effects in video games. And this teaches you dodging. I learned. It took me a little while, but I learned. The mothball. How you doing? I'm from Boston. We get the mothball in Boston. Still one of the most, like, elegant solutions. Like, how they managed to do the, the morph ball. Because they didn't really know... 100% how they were going to translate... The, uh, morph ball. Or if they were going to do a third-person Metroid game. But going between first-person and third... Is, like, perfect. Sandstone, I think that needs, um... Bombs. I also have always loved that the Morph Ball has its own light source. It not only looks cool, but it's useful. Yeah, X-Files whistles. Mulder, it's me, Scully. There's an alien in my stomach. Thought you said aliens were a real scully. Are you an alien? Mulder, that's my cat. Oh. Your Mulder is just a really drunk guy. Yeah. Uh, I know I saw a UFO, Scully. It was right there. Mulder, are you fucking drunk? On the job? Always am, Scully.
not just always drunk, but like completely fucking shit faced at all times. Am I uh, going back into the places I have been already, chat? Like here? I guess so. I should know. I mean, with the Morph Ball technology, I probably have a couple things that I, I could get. But I also don't have bombs yet. So we can't do that one. Again, it's a shame that physical games don't really like, come with manuals and like little extras as much anymore. Unless they're, you know, it's like a limited run pressing or something. Because I would actually buy the game again physically just to have it, but I'm... The more I think about it, the less I justify it. If it's just a plastic case with, like, a printout. Which is, of course, what it will be. But, I mean... To me, it's kind of fucking weird, yet again, that here's this lauded game... One of, you know, one of the highest rated games critically of all time. The, probably the crown jewel of the uh, Metroid series in some ways. And, um, it just got a shadow drop. Like, you would almost expect this to have some hype and, like, a special edition. Because you know there are Metroid fans, like myself, who would buy a special edition. I would almost certainly have bought something like I did for Dread. And also, you know, Dread sold really well for the Metroid series. Honestly, I was a little disappointed it didn't do better, because I felt like it could have. I think it hit, what, like 4 million copies? Close to four million. No small number by any means. Three? Was it? Um, last known update is three. So you have to assume that by now it's probably gotten close to like three, five. To four. God damn it, chat. I need bombs for this. Alright, I, I kinda. Oh, wait, no, that was backwards. I'm dumb. We're fine. Everything is good here. How are you? So now people are saying 2.5 million. The quality of Dread is like a 5 million copy game, as far as I'm concerned. And even then, the fact that Pokemon can release like broken games and get like, you know, not to throw too much shade because I actually liked Pokemon um, Violet more than I expected to. I thought there was a lot of like good stuff in there that could have been better, but that's okay. Point being, Dread was so good, I felt like I wish more people checked it out. Maybe it was, like, not the best marketing. Maybe people just don't love Metroid as much as they should. I don't know. The future is a vague thing, ever-changing and always in doubt. Even if we Chozo could gain the ability to foresee the future, it would be a hollow gift, for we could never hope to control what has yet to occur. The fountain is an example of this. The dry may come when the water dries up, and there is nothing we could do to stop such a tragedy. But, 
we do know this. Unlike the uncertain flow of water, the power of our will is strong and enduring. The will of the Chozo will never run dry. Dry chorizo? No, you want, like, wet chorizo. Not wet, but like juicy. Juicy chorizo. environmental details like that. Oh yeah, this room. Wasps! Chozo script translated. The cries of this dying land echo in our ears as we Chozo watch the great poison seep ever further into the living pulse of the planet. The dark energy sinks into the trees and waters, devouring all life. Peaceful beasts die by the thousands. Some creatures survive, but their forms grow as twisted and evil as the force that fell from the sky. Many of these mutated monstrosities remain small enough to do little harm, but Others grow enormous and threaten our very existence. One such beast defies, defiles our sacred fountain, disgorging poison from its foul form, replacing pure flowing water with cascades of creeping death. Even in the face of such horror, we Chozo do not turn in fear. We are all that stands in the way of this great poison, and it is our duty to contain it. Like the quickest change from we're here, we love it here. We're gonna live with the planet to, oh fuck. There's a bunch of shit that's seeping into the crops and the milk is rotten. It really didn't take that long. It's the mitochondria. I'm not answering that question, chat member, about Samus and the Morph Ball. I wonder if there's an alien version of Walter White that made the blue phase on. Jessup. I need to cook. Jessup. They want us for an advertisement. For some potato chip. Or some shit. All right, Mr. White, I'll do it. Shriek that. Territorial ceiling dweller. Body temperature peaks at 121 degrees centigrade. Shriek bats have a high internal temperature, making them easy to spot with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings while hunting for their small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb anything that wanders near. Oh yeah, I'm going full E3 camera. A 
apparently there's an ex-dev at Retro that said they did get Studio Self Suck for external help with the game. <laughs> yeah! You should see the way they spelled it. It wasn't obvious enough. It really wasn't that obvious. It was really good! Somehow chat is still finding new and innovative ways to make me say this ridiculous stuff. I never say gross stuff on my streams. I went to Catholic school. Grisby. Subvolcanic carrion feeder. Carapace can be breached by missiles. The Grisby's carapace has been fused together by superheated air. This barrier stands up to everything but concussive blasts. Its intelligence is limited to instinctive scavenging patterns. Lava looks nicer. Risby. Just deleted. Vinny, I've been seeing you a lot in Fieldy's channel. Keep it up. I don't know what that means, but it's not me. Oops. Lava caves. Not even what it's called, but thanks for the narration. And yeah, I don't think I'm able to really do this yet. Oh god. I thought for a second I would be able to, like, speed run through it, but I, I don't think that's the case at all. The, um, water effect on the visor looks better. It even moves. Some pretty nice condensation you got there, Metroid Prime. This game actually does have really good 3D platforming um, for a first-person shooter. In the original control scheme, when you jump, Samus looks down automatically a little bit, and it really helps with the platforming. But in this, you can just look down. Vinny, I have never played these games. Would you recommend? Well, as I've said, Metroid Prime... Metroid, as a series, is maybe my favorite video game series of all time. Maybe. And Prime is in my... probably my top 20 games. I know I made a list, it's probably in my top 20. Prime 2 might in some ways be even a little bit better than this, and 3 is just is good, but it's not great. I mean, you know, you know what? No, it's great in its own way, but when you have to live up to this in Prime 2, like Prime 2, I think, has some more interesting ideas. I think this is the more solid experience overall. But it's kind of a, a crapshoot. I think they're both... One and two are both, like, almost on the same level for me. And three is not as good by a little bit. But still pretty damn good. So yeah, I mean, that and of course, if you haven't played Super Metroid, what the hell are you doing? You need to play Super Metroid. 
I mean, I don't know if every human on the planet would love it as much as I do, but... I certainly think it's one of the best games ever made. Yeah, yeah, where, where, are, we, where are we going? I don't, I don't even really know. Maybe, am I going back to Talon, maybe? Upper floor? Can I even get up there? Oh, wow. Yeah, I most certainly can. Somehow I missed it. Hey, chat, look. Hey, chat, look. I hear the noise. I know there's a thing here, but I don't know if I can get it yet. And then there's those missiles over there. We'll come back. And yes, for as many times as I have played this game, which is to say about three or four, maybe three completions, and then me playing it a couple more times, but not finishing it. But for as many times as I have played this game, I don't remember specifics. Some I do, I guess, but not all. Bad. Oh. Recording to logbook. The surges of negative energy brought by the meteor far exceed our expectation. We Chozo have yet to find a way to rid ourselves of the great poison. All we can do now is seal it away and wait for the day when a power to purify the poison appears. However, it is already impossible to collect all the pieces of the great poison, as it has already spread seeping into the planet, and hardening. Someone in chat said, suit trying to save your life, but ignoring it. Omega lull. Chat, admit. If you had a, a real-life suit that could save your life and was, like, giving you warnings, would you let it save your life? Wow, there, there's a lot of no's in chat. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Nothing to do in here anyway. Not yet. It's 
snapping vines. This is the thing from Half-Life. Reaper vine, powerful rock-dwelling tentacle. Single eye upon the reaper vine keeps a con constant vigil, but its vision is limited to 10 meters. A scythe-like appendage on its tip is honed to lethal sharpness. The reaper vine will swing its this blade wildly at every, uh, anything that enters its zone of perception. Reaper Vine is actually my streaming competition. Don't like that guy. Just wanted to open the door, but all right. Fungal funnies over here. Do we know who developed this game yet? Jesus. Is the Switch handling 60 FPS? I haven't noticed a single frame dip. And again, it seems like it's been, you know, people are saying it's retro. And there's some, um, some tweet from a retro developer saying it was retro. And I will say, even though they have been, like, absent for years for some reason, their stuff has always looked good and, and run really well. I forgot to scan that again. It's optimized really, 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 really well. So... At the very least, this is encouraging to me, because it shows that even if Retro has had some layoffs and some, like, hard times, if this is, in fact, all them, they can still develop something for the Switch that looks good, um, plays good, and is faithful to the Metroid Prime name. Then again, this is just Metroid Prime. Creating an entirely new game is a bit of a different story. Which also makes me wonder if Bandai Namco, when they got it, did they come up with, like, a story? Y you know, like, did they develop, like, lore? It's like Star Wars with the sequels, where George Lucas came up with an idea for the sequels, and Disney was like, Nah, you can just go eat some salad. We're gonna do our own thing, which is gonna be worse. But yeah, I do wonder if um, they had some kind of story in place, and if it was up to Retro to use it or not. Because, again, it's been four years since the announcement. But, you know, developing an engine, developing a whole new approach after all these years. New lore. Can't be an easy task. Especially considering they've been hiring, like, a lot. Maybe I'm overstating that, but if I'm not mistaken, there have been a lot of job notices for Retro over the past couple of years. Received. 
increased war wasp activity nearby. Oh, that's because it's taking me too long to figure out where to go. Why is the map screen pure black now? It's not. It just dims everything. Open door. Charge beam. Charge beam. Every item I get will now be Boston item. Disaster struck suddenly. We had a vague dark foreboding and it became truth. A meteor appeared from nowhere, casting a dark shadow of debris over the land with the violence of its impact. Its, de its destructive force spent. The fallen star burned itself out rapidly. And the incident should have faded into memory, but the meteor brought with it corruption. A great poison burst forth into the land, strange energy that clawed at natural life with a ferocity. That strange negative energy emitted from the meteor expanded to encompass Talon 4 in a night as a spider weaves a web. That's the sound effect that should have occurred. I think I missed something up there. But yeah, I started watching Nightcrawler, because I've never seen it. And I promise you, it's not about the dude from the X-Men. Um, and I caught the first half hour of it before I had to, you know, check out the Nintendo Direct. So clearly, I had to prioritize. But it's, uh... It's pretty good so far, chat. Very intense. So no. Um, Jake Jilly Hilly is actually kind of amazing in the movie so far. But also, like, the nature of media is, is one of those um, topics that I find very interesting and also very sad about how the news cycle is just pain and, and hurt and, like, fear and violence all the time. Not to get too hippie about it, but the fact that that movie is covering that topic when it's something that's been on my mind, like, seeing family just being affected by that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's a good movie so far. Uh, I'm curious to see how, like, where it's gonna go. I can't believe that kid from Donnie Darko ended up becoming <laughs> one of the biggest actors in the world. Without spoilers, what is it about? Um, a sociopath... ...early on in the movie... ...decides that... ...like, he's just looking for something. And he's fucked up, and he's a psychopath as well. And he decides that he wants to cover disaster, like, um, car accidents and, like, crime and violence... 
and he just kind of just puts himself in these situations where he can film these things and then sell them to local news stations for money, freelance. And that's basically the beginning of the movie, and it's setting up... There's other fucked up shit that happens, but I won't spo spoil or anything, but, um... It's, it's interesting, and he's really convincing. Like, exceedingly... ...fucked. Luminescent cylinders functioning at 80%. There's an item here somewhere. Um, he's really convincing, and... ...it seems like the, the direction and cinematography is all really good as well. I need bombs for this one. Okay. I have to watch Imbruge. Earn Imbruge? The dude who directed Banshees of Inishirin. I've been meaning to check out Earn Bruges. Imbruges? Ambrosia. I need to watch that at some point too. Earn Brew? Uh, yeah, the Scottish soda. Yeah, that. just catching up. Once in a while, like every couple days, I like to, uh, well, for a long time I wasn't because I just watched so much fucking YouTube. Just stuff. Just like, I don't care. It's, it's an hour-long video about the invention of the Hot Pocket. Sure, I'll leave it on and I'll watch it. But I feel like if I'm watching that stuff, I may as well catch up on movies and some of those movies can enrich my perspective a little bit, perhaps. Okay, so we get a stone toad. Stone toad, um, preys on creatures smaller than itself, vulnerable only from within. Stone toad is able to remain still for days. It preys upon creatures smaller than itself, inhaling them whole. Anything it finds undigestible, it regurgitates. Stone toads use their tusks as a last resort in combat. Oh, that's nice. What a satisfying sound the morph ball makes as it rolls around on the ground. Mechanoid incinerator drone programmed for high temperature waste disposal. Device schematics indicate a high risk of malfunction when internal power core is damaged. Unit has minimal combat programming, but can defend itself if necessary. This drone's intense heat blasts compensate for its lack of battle prowess. Oh, it's aggravating the nest. <laughs> I forgot about this one. It, it definitely is one of the weirder bosses conceptually. It's just a flamethrower. Graphically looks really good. The flame looks good. The shininess and the metal look good. I feel like this one's designed to teach you, like... Um, jumping and, like, morph-falling 
to avoid attacks, perhaps. Mainly jumping. Yeah, you don't really need to morph ball under it. This one teaches you friendship through intense flames under threat of peace and love. Restart and scan the wasps. Chat, I'm gonna miss stuff. It's okay. Uh, yeah, the 100% run, the dream is over. It's okay. The explosion effect is different. Yeah, I was looking at that. It looks... It looks good. I wasn't sure how different it was, but yeah, it's pretty... It looks pretty different. It has detail. Now, if only it made the sound that Boba Fett's ship made. Did you ever see that cool movie, 12 Years of Boba Fett's Ship? Did you ever hear that Stone Temple Pilot song, Forbidden Syllables? Syllables, forbidden syllables. Got a set of balls. <laughs> Wait, is this the scummy water? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty bad, that water. It's a lamp. Yeah, but why? Why is it lamp? I'm also trying to find the secret thing here. It's somewhere. Is there motion controls? There can be if you want them. There's gyro and, um... There's also... You can point your Joy-Con at the screen to kind of emulate the Wiimote. I'm not using them. I'm using Twin Stick. Because it's just... It just feels better that way. It's close enough to original Metroid Prime, but the extra level of, like, camera movement is a, a godsend. I 
fucking hear it. Chat, it's somewhere. There's- there's a secret here. It's at the very top. Is it above- oh, is it up there? How do I get that? It's a little fucking dangerous. Double jump from the lamps? I don't have a double jump right yet, right now. Haha! That was smart. I like the, um, the music in this area kind of morphs and builds as you go. Like, it's an, uh, kind of an underappreciated thing I didn't notice when I was younger. There's like a, a story behind this game's sound font too. Like, some of the sounds that, that it uses, this whole, for the Prime series. is like, just on some, f like, futuristic samples CD that they found. It's like, yeah, one of those 90 CDs of, like, futuristic samples, and it had, a, like, a bunch of interesting sci-fi noises that they ended up structuring a good chunk of the soundtrack around. Sample CDs were a huge thing then. I mean, it makes sense. Now we use prefabs. I'm sure they did then, too, but I mean... You know, that, that was the way to distribute them, as opposed to, like, buying a, a stock library subscription. Or just going on YouTube or something. Okay, I can't get up there. That's for another time. How does this compare to the San Andreas remaster? Ugh. It almost feels like the developers cared about this one. And didn't just, like, blanket AI upscale three massive open-world games. You know what they should have done? And normally, I wouldn't... ...say something like this, but to me, this shows me that Rockstar kind of probably should have remastered the games one at a time. You know, maybe did it themselves, personally or at the very least had more oversight over Grove Street games, or just hired a better team, and then, like, spend the time required for each game as opposed to trying to accomplish, like, massive overhauls in three giant games at the same time. And then that's that's how they ended up running the AI algorithm to upscale the text, and that's how you got, like, bap de -bur -de on one of the signs. And, like, some of the models not making any sense. I mean, that game had some deeper problems, too. The art style... ...being one of them. And... 
plenty of other annoyances. But I'm gonna say overall, I feel like... It probably would have ended up better if they did GTA 3 first and spent that same amount of time devoting themselves to the, just the one game. Even if it ended up still not quite perfect, it would have been better than what we got from all three. They spread themselves too thin and they are already maybe not the most talented Grove Street games. I know, it's an, it's an ouch, but they didn't really have experience. They just did mobile ports, if I'm not mistaken. They didn't really do much up until that point. I believe this is a scan. Venom weed, poisonous plant that retracts into the ground if threatened. They evolved to thrive in their, in the habitats of large organisms. They lure prey with brightly colored leaves, then detain it with tiny barbs that deliver a powerful toxin. Venom weeds rapidly decompose anything that succumbs in their midst. It's poison, chat. You don't want to inhale that shit. Don't breathe this. Shit, we gotta do this again. Someone just said, God, that unlocked a memory. I mean, I don't even know where I pulled that from. Just got, like, one of those random... ...like, flashback moments. That was a massive thing at the time, wasn't it? Will it blend? That was a really, really big... ...series. Like, 2007, 2008, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like Hydraulic Press Channel ended up kind of taking the mantle... ...in a way. Like, they took the torch and ran with it. Um, I think before Will It Blend, there was a channel where they microwaved different things. Did you ever see that fucking copypasta of the person who's like, if you put coins in your microwave, it'll make smaller coins. And then they just show a picture of a very, very tiny, like, penny or dime. And then the following image is just someone saying, thanks, asshole, and it's like their microwave exploded. Magmore. Note, if you put coins in your microwave, based on some random spurious post you saw on the internet... That's bad. I wasn't gonna say you were dumb or anything, I'm just gonna- that's bad. That's just bad. Vinny, it was tin foil ball, not coins. No, there's another one with tiny coins. There's another one with tiny coins. I'm telling my brethren in Christopher, I'm telling you. Did this not scan? 
I guess it didn't. Huh. Uh, now I need to find one more. One is on the underside of a platform. Oh, that explains it. You rat bastard, you. How did you know? Tell you what, I don't see it. Still, I don't see it. I don't know where it is. Oh. It's along the outside wall. Shot, I don't see it. Alright. We'll just look one more time. This time I'll be very... What? Uh-oh. I should not be here. I'll, I'll be extremely observant. I'm gonna observe my surroundings. I'm gonna find it. That one's been activated. Then it was right there? What do you mean it was right there? I didn't see it. What, what do you mean right there? Tell you what, the, the dang old chat, I, I think that chat the damn lion, dang old lion. That's what's going on here, Oh, The red acid gas? No, I believe, I believe chat knows where it is. I just don't think they can communicate effectively where it is, so I'm just blaming them. And that's not fair to chat. I shouldn't be blaming chat, but I really, really... I really, really don't see it. Vinny, you just passed it. There's no way- I'm observing. So closely. The main door, Vin. The main door. Main door. Joel raid? Thank you. Fecal raid. That's that's what you're calling it? <laughs> calling it the fecal raid? Alright. Under the main door. Fecal shadow legends. Thank you, Joel. I appreciate it very much. Um, I told people to watch your thing earlier. But... I wanted to, um... Raid Lime, because Lime helped me with Twitch stuff. So, I appreciate... I appreciate that. You just passed it. I don't believe you! But I hope you're doing well. And hi everyone from Joel's stream, thank you. Thank you for being here. It is Metroid Prime, which was announced today. 
I lost my shit when I saw this was announced. You don't know how much of a Metroid fan I am. I especially like having to find one very specific platform with a symbol underneath it. That's been the past five minutes now, um, so I'm enjoying that tremendously. Nathaniel, I cannot find this. Then it's right there. Okay, okay, okay. It's right there, you say? I'm looking. We got that one. We got the one up there. This is a wasp. Oh. I almost got to the point where I was hoping it wouldn't even exist, and that the game is just, like, soft lock and, uh, locked, and they forgot to add it. Like, I got to that point where I was thinking... How great would it be if it wasn't real? But now I have to admit that, yes, that was a very easy one to find, and I just didn't see it. And I don't know how I didn't see it, so that's awesome. Well, we were talking about it. Uh, Joel, the good news is this is actually really, really well done. Like, almost all of the visuals have been either redone or drastically improved. The controls are way better. A lot of post-processing stuff. It runs well. So this is really good, and it's 40 bucks, so that's not the cheapest, but... I was saying, for the amount of work that they seemingly put into this, I'm really happy with it. Um, two and three. We were talking about the GTA trilogy before you raided, and how... If maybe they focused on one at a time... Even with the general incompetence of Grove Street Games, I think the quality would have been better. But, um... Yeah, if this was just a straight, like, port, like they did for the Wii, then I would say it should be a trilogy, absolutely. But, for what they're doing here, I'm- I'm happy that this ended up being really good. Flagra. I- I honestly think they should have just called it Plantera, but that's me. This mutant plant is the source of toxic water in the ruins. Flagra's growth cycle has been radically accelerated. As a result, it requires near constant exposure to um, solar energy to remain active. This exposure has made Flagra's outer shell thick and durable. Its lower root system is unprotected and vulnerable. However, exploit this flaw when possible. Concentrated weapon fire can daze it for short periods. I think I remember how to do this, but... There we go. Thank you, helpful camera. Music was bugged in the original version... ...for this boss. Apparently, it only played a small loop. I feel like maybe I knew about that, but... The loop was short and stressful. Maybe they didn't catch it because it sounded, like, appropriate. Or maybe not appropriate, but just like it sounded accurate or appropriate for a boss fight, yeah.
So yeah, there's a good chance I've never heard this full song before. The full one plays in the Wii version. Okay, I haven't played that version. Boss looks awesome, by the way. Really good new textures and model and everything. I'm pretty sure it's a new model, but the textures are, are way better quality. It's a good thing Samus doesn't have to smell this. Those reflection graphics. Whoa. Whoa, I want that. Fire Emblem update. That exact thing should be like in the collector's edition as like a collectible coin-sized object. Or like, you remember the Quake Champions Collector's Edition, I think? That had the spinny Quake logo? Maybe you could just put that on like a spit and just have it rotate constantly in your home. Never has an emote been more appropriate than that one right now. New enemy. Pulse Bambu. Pulse Bambu. Life form of raw energy periodically releases explosive segments. Pulse Bambus are energy beings invulnerable to most known weapons. Electrical energy can harm them. They lack any intelligence beyond an instinctive attraction to other charged energy sources. Pulse Bambus produce energy constantly. All excess energy is shed regardless of who or what may be near. 
Alright, I gotta hit up a save point now. Magmore? Vinny, what is your opinion on dinosaurs? <laughs> I like dinosaurs a lot, actually. They are cool, and they are carnivorous um, sometimes, and they have uh, big teeth. Basically ducks? Sure. Chat, this is a very good remaster. Having played a little over two hours, doing the first boss, um, really getting a feel for the game, this is exactly why I didn't stream Metroid Prime for years. Because I wanted this. And this is it. I mean, just look at the, the reflection on the, on the cannon. Look at the light reflection on the cannon. I love it. They did a great job with this. I'm really impressed. I'm very happy with it. And, um... Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I'm just... I have a lot of games to play, but this will now be added to the streaming rotation. So expect more of this at some point soon. It's Metroid Prime, it's still great, and it's a great remaster. I'm so happy, it's not shit. My god. Shoot gun really fast to make it overheat. Just like in the original. Yeah, it just releases a little smoke. I think the old one released like in a, um, had like a little distortion effect. Um, alright. It's real. We'll take a quick break, and I'll be back with Dark and Darker. So, you know, stick around if you want, and... Dark and Darker, up next.